Okay, today our topic is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The equation that we're interested in when uh, trying to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors is this one, ax equals lambda times x. Here a is an n by n matrix, x is a vector in Rn, and lambda is a scalar. So we're essentially asking, um, can you find x and lambda? We, know, we don't know either of those, but can you find x and lambda such that when you multiply a times x, you get the same result as simply scaling x by lambda. So if x is not equal to zero and satisfies ax equals lambda x, then it's said to be an eigenvector of a with associated eigenvalue lambda. Okay, so we require that eigenvectors not be zero because uh, clearly the zero vector satisfies this equation. So we're looking for um, non-zero solutions. So x would be an eigenvector, lambda an eigenvalue. Now we've seen a similar system uh, to this when we were uh, finding the steady state vector for uh, a transition matrix back when we were looking at Markov chains. And that, if you remember, uh, looked like this. We had mx equals x. So we wanted uh, to know uh, if there was a vector x such that you apply the transition matrix to it and you get the same vector back. All right. Um, if you just uh, look at the x here is having a coefficient of 1, uh, so we have mx equals 1 times x, then it's of the same form as our eigenvector and eigenvalue equation, ax equals lambda x. So we have seen systems like this before, and we're going to solve them in a similar way as we, as we did when we found the steady state vector. So if you remember what we did then, we took the x over to the other side and factored it out, and we ended up with m minus i times x equals 0, um, and that was the equation to solve to find the steady state vector. We're going to do a similar thing uh, with our eigenvector system, uh, bring the lambda x to the other side, factor out x, and we end up with a minus lambda times the identity matrix, uh, times x equals 0. So this is a system that we need to solve. Now it's complicated here more so than with the Markov chains because we don't know what lambda is. We don't know x and we don't know lambda. Alright, now uh, let's think about this a bit. We know that uh, x to be an eigenvector can't be the zero vector. So we have a homogeneous system here and we want to find non-trivial solutions to it. All right, so some uh, things that we know. Uh, this system is going to have non-trivial solutions if uh, it has free variables. Okay, and it has free variables if the matrix A minus lambda I does not have a pivot position in every column. And that happens when a minus lambda i is not invertible, right? Because if it doesn't have a pivot position, every column has fewer than n pivot positions, so it's not invertible. And uh, that happens when the determinant of that matrix, a minus lambda i, is equal to zero. And this last uh, item here is the key to how we are going to find eigenvalues. Okay, so we're going to compute the determinant of a minus lambda i, and that actually turns out to give us a polynomial. And we're going to set it equal to zero and uh, solve for lambda. Once we have the eigenvalues, then we can proceed to finding the eigenvectors uh, by plugging in uh, what we know for lambda for the eigenvalues, and then we just have a simple uh, homogeneous system to solve to find x. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here's a matrix A. It's a 2 by 2. We first find the eigenvalues of A by solving the determinant A minus lambda I equals 0. So here's A minus lambda I. Here's A minus lambda times the identity matrix. Okay, 
So we end up, basically, we're, uh, what you end up with is just subtracting lambda off the diagonal elements. And then we want to take the determinant of that matrix. So we take the determinant, do the crisscross, uh, and uh, we get this stuff. And we uh, expand, put it all together, and uh, then factor it. And when we factor it, we get lambda minus 8 times lambda plus 2. And we set that equal to 0, right? Because that's what we want the determinant of this matrix to equal 0. And clearly, the solutions are lambda equals 8 and lambda equals negative 2. So those are our eigenvalues. Okay, um, here we ended up, go back, uh, we ended up with a lambda squared minus 6 lambda minus 16. That's a quadratic uh, function. So in a 2 by 2 matrix, we ended up with a quadratic. In general, if you have an n by n matrix, then the determinant of a minus lambda i will be a polynomial of degree n. So for a 3 by 3, you get a cubic function. 4 by 4, you get a degree 4, and so forth. Okay, so at this point we have two eigenvalues for A, and uh, we want to find the eigenvectors or eigenvector or eigenvectors associated with each of these eigenvalues. So let's start off with lambda equals eight. Um, so we want to solve A minus A minus lambda i. Lambda in this case is eight, so A minus eight i times x equals a zero vector. So first we need to compute a minus 8i, and there it is. And then we set up that homogeneous system. And remember that the whole point of finding the eigenvalues was so that we would have a free variable. And so if you end up working on problems and you're trying to find an eigenvector and you don't end up with a free variable, then you've made a mistake somewhere. Either you don't have a correct eigenvalue or you, you made a mistake in solving this system. Um, so you should always end up with um, at least one free variable so that the system has non-trivial solutions. So in this case, uh, we end up with x1 equals uh, 3x2. x2 is free. So if we write it in parametric vector form, it looks like this. And uh, so that tells us that any multiple, right, any vector of this form, multiple of 3, 1, is an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda equals 8. You can check that to, to make sure it works. AX should equal lambda X. So if we multiply A times X, here's A, here's X. We end up with the vector 24, 8. And we can factor out lambda, which is 8. And uh, that we get 8 times 3, 8 times 1. And 3, 1 is our vector X. So that's equal to lambda X. So it works out. This is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 8. All right, and we got another eigenvalue to look at. Uh, lambda equals negative 2. So we need to solve a minus lambda i x equals 0 again for uh, lambda equals negative 2. So we got a minus minus uh, 2 times i is just a plus 2 times the identity, which is this matrix. And we set up the homogeneous system. And again, do one row operation. The second row goes away. We got a free variable. And here's our solution. So if we write it in parametric vector form, we get this. And uh, so that tells us that any multiple of the vector negative one third one is an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue negative two. So, um, and you can check again like we did last time. Multiply a times x, you get 2, negative 6, and that is equal to negative 2 times negative 1, 3, which was the eigenvector uh, that I picked. Um, you, you're, you might be saying, hey, that didn't look like uh, this one that we got here. And it doesn't because uh, I just multiplied it, scaled it. Because remember, any multiple of this vector is an eigenvector. So I just uh, chose x2 to be 3 and uh, scaled it. 
And so uh, 3 times negative 1 third gave me the negative 1, and then 3 times 1 gave me 3. And I did that just to get rid of the fraction there. But any multiple, any non-zero multiple, I should say, any non-zero multiple of this vector would be an eigenvector uh, corresponding to lambda equals negative 2. All right. Um, so given an eigenvalue lambda of a matrix A, we solve this homogeneous system, A minus lambda I times X equals 0, to find the associated eigenvector or eigenvectors. All right, now a little bit of terminology here. Think back um, to uh, the previous chapter. We talked about the null space of a matrix. And uh, remember, the null space of a matrix is just the set of solutions uh, to the homogeneous system involving that matrix. And so if you look at this uh, system we were solving to find the eigenvectors, you can see it's a homogeneous system. So the set of solutions uh, to this will be um, elements of the null space, or actually will comprise the null space of A minus lambda I. And uh, we give that space, since it's associated with finding eigenvectors, we give it a special name and call it the eigenspace of A. So the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is just the null space of A minus lambda I, right? It's a set of all solutions to this system, A minus lambda I times X equals zero. So the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda consists of the zero vector, right? Because that's in every null space and uh, all eigenvectors of A minus lambda I. Therefore, a basis for the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda is the same as a basis for the null space of A minus lambda I. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, let's find all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix A. So we start off uh, to find the eigenvalues. Um, take the determinant of A minus lambda I. And uh, here it gets a little complicated because it's got a three by three, so we have to expand about uh, one of the rows or columns. I expanded about the first column. And so we get negative four minus lambda times the determinant of this two by two matrix here. So that's what you see right here. Then it's, uh, since this is a plus position, next be minus. So that's where the minus six comes from. And then it's, the matrix that you get when you delete that second row in the first column. So we get this. And then uh, it's a minus term, so the next one's plus. So I get plus six times uh, this little two by two sitting up here in the uh, upper right corner. And uh, then it's just algebra. You know, take these two by two determinants, do some algebra. Oops. Uh, there we go. Um, and we end up uh, with this cubic function, which makes sense because three by three matrix. And uh, it, we end up being able to um, rewrite it like this, negative lambda times lambda minus two squared equals zero. And so clearly uh, lambda equals zero is a solution and lambda equals two is a solution. Now in this case, since it's uh, lambda minus two squared, uh, the eigenvalue 2 actually occurs twice because it's a solution twice here. So we say that lambda equals 2 has multiplicity 2. That means it occurs two times. Lambda equals 0, it only occurs once, so it has multiplicity 1. All right, then we need to do the same process as before to find the eigenvectors. Um, so for lambda equals 0, we need to solve a minus 0 times the identity times x equals 0. So in this case, uh, a minus lambda i is just a. So we uh, set up the homogeneous system and uh, get that matrix into reduced echelon form. Um, and here's the solution. So we write that in parametric vector form. And uh, so any multiple of negative 1, 1, one 
uh, would be an eigenvector associated with lambda equals zero. Okay, then we move on to the next eigenvalue, which is two. So we solve a minus two i times x equals zero. And uh, so we compute a minus two i. Then set up the homogeneous system and get it in reduced echelon form. And notice here that we've got two free variables. And so we're going to end up with two uh, linearly independent eigenvectors uh, here. And sometimes that happens because remember lambda equals 2 was um, an eigenvalue that occurred twice, had multiplicity 2. And so sometimes in that case you end up with two linearly independent eigenvectors, sometimes only one. In this case we're going to have two because we have two free variables. So uh, the solution looks like this. Uh, every eigenvector of A associated with uh, lambda equals 2 is a linear combination of these two vectors. And clearly they are linearly independent. So to review this problem we've just looked at, here's our matrix A. Um, eigenvalues were 0 and 2. For lambda equals 0, we ended up with one eigenvector. Uh, lambda equals 2, we've got two linearly independent eigenvectors. Now clearly any multiple of this one is an eigenvector associated with lambda equals 0. And any linear combination of these two is an eigenvector associated with lambda equals 2. But we're really concerned about how many linearly independent eigenvectors we have. And so from lambda equals 0 we got 1, from lambda equals 2 we got 2. All right, so we can say that the vector negative 1, 1, 1 is a basis for the eigenspace of A associated with lambda equals 0. Similarly, these other two vectors would form a basis for the eigenspace of A associated with lambda equals 2. All right, this brings us to a theorem which says if uh, V1 through VR are eigenvectors, that correspond to distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1 through lambda r, of an n by n matrix A, then the set V1 through Vr is linearly independent. Now put in a uh, little simpler terms. This just says eigenvectors that come from different eigenvalues are linearly independent. Eigenvectors that come from different eigenvalues are linearly independent. So from our previ previous example, right, this first one uh, came from a different eigenvalue from the second two. So we know that um, this set is linearly independent, right, because the, the latter two came from the same eigenvalue, but they were linearly independent. We knew that from uh, before. And then when you throw in this other one that came from the other eigenvalue, we know that this set is linearly independent because of the theorem because they came from different, uh, the first one and the second two came from different eigenvalues. All right, um, we're going to hit that a little bit more in the next section, um, but uh, we'll leave it at that for right now. And um, I just want to talk about um, uh, a little easier problem. Okay, what we've done so far is just taken, basically done the hard problem. Here's a matrix, find all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But sometimes uh, you just want to know if a given vector um, is an eigenvector of a matrix. And that is a much easier problem. Okay, So suppose we just want to know if this vector x given here is an eigenvector of the matrix A. For this, go back to the original equation and think. Um, does ax equal lambda x? Well, we can multiply a times x. That's trivial, right? And then how would we know if it's an eigenvector? Well, the result of a times x should be some scalar times x. So we multiply a times x, and in this case we get this vector here, and notice that I can factor out a negative 2, and I end up with negative 2 times this vector, which is the original x. So in this case we have ax equals negative 2 times x, 
So that means that x is indeed an eigenvector of a, and the associated eigenvalue is negative 2. Okay, so didn't have to solve any systems of equations or take determinants or anything like that. It was just a simple plug it into the basic equation and see if it satisfies it. All right, um, another uh, similar question is given uh, an, a, a scalar value, check uh, to see if it's an eigenvalue of a matrix. Um, and again, um, you don't have to go through the process that we were doing to find the eigenvalues. Okay, Just to check to see if a number is an eigenvalue, you need only look at the determinant of a minus lambda i, where lambda is the value that you're given. So in this case, we look at the determinant of a minus 3 times the identity. So we set up that matrix, take its determinant, and in this case, we end up with 0. And so the determinant of a minus 3i is equal to 0. That tells us that 3 is indeed an eigenvalue of a. If we didn't get 0, then it wouldn't be an eigenvalue. Okay, a little more terminology. Um, this expression, the determinant of a minus lambda i, okay, that's what you end up with when you um, are, are uh, trying to figure out the eigenvalues of a matrix. Um, and we said that you end up with a polynomial there. It's called the characteristic polynomial of A. And when you set it equal to zero, then we call it the characteristic equation of A. So the characteristic polynomial is just what you get when you take the determinant, and then you set that equal to zero, and we call that the, the characteristic equation. Okay, we have now the final installment of the invertible matrix theorem. So, um, if A is an n by n matrix, A is invertible if and only if 0 is not an eigenvalue of A. Okay, 0 is not an eigenvalue of A. And uh, actually, it's pretty easy to see that if you think about it a little bit. Um, every eigenvalue of A satisfies the, the characteristic equation, which is the determinant of a minus lambda equals 0. So if 0 was an eigenvalue of A, then we'd have the determinant of A minus 0 times I would be 0. But A minus 0 times I is just A, so we would have the determinant of A is equal to 0, and that means that A is not invertible. Okay, So therefore, 0 can't be an eigenvalue of A if A is invertible.